What's up, YouTube? Well, cold weather's hit us. Kind of caught us a little bit off guard. Somehow, we thought this project that we've been on for 14 or 15 months now would only take six. Proved that one wrong. But uh, one of the things that's always been a question is, once we unhooked the heater, the heater hoses to the front when we did the inside, so I've seen a lot of guys struggle with how to bring them back up to the front. And I'm no different. I'm struggling through this too, but um, I'm making some progress. <laughs> so let me show you where I'm at here. So here we are at the front of the bus. And I just determined with the help of the awesome guy at Western Bus Sales, <laughs> the mechanic over there is super nice. and. I can text him questions and it's just super awesome. But anyhow, I didn't pay attention when I unhooked them, but it's important that uh, the inline goes on the inline and the return line is the return line because there's a valve right up here on mine that meters the hot water to control the temperature. And this is a burp off valve, so this thing comes off and you can bleed air out of that. If you can see right here, I've disconnected the hose all the way up to here. This is what I've tore out. So that hooked on right there at the bottom of the heater thing. I had this insulation to protect it from the cold at the front. And this hose here, they're telling me at the bus company was to protect it from road salts and what have you. So I've got those off. I got the hoses removed um, to where I cut them when I disconnected them from the floor. What I chose to do was just buy a new heater hose and run it all the way from the front, from the back, all the way back up here because, uh, I mean, it's designed for the job. And it was basically a hundred bucks to get two rolls of it that are long enough to do the job. So now I've come to the point where the guys in the shop just said if the heater core comes out easily I could get it ultrasonically cleaned and pressure tested before I hooked everything back up. So I just put the feelers out on that so I'll see what the... But I think all I got to do is take these screws out here and the whole thing will slide out and I could go get it cleaned and pressure tested. Then I have to route the hoses back through the underbay all the way back to here, which is where the booster pump to boost the water flow up there is. So here you can see in the back end that I basically got the booster pump right there. And that's where I disconnected from where it went under the floor. And that's the return line back to the engine. I'm just gonna try to thread all this stuff through there and figure out how to hang it and keep it away from everything critical because uh, those heater hoses get really hot so you wouldn't want to put them on top of a wire loom or anything like that I don't think okay guys I'm back down underneath and I'm surveying the situation here here's the diesel heater that we just recently put in and its exhaust pipe is coming down here I got to stay away from that this is the air tanks here and there's nothing up on top of them and these straps kind of make a natural uh, area to go over. If I come through the under bay, I think I can run right along the C-frame there. And if you look up there, you see there's a, some natural, whatever, they had those holes in there for whatever reason. I think I can just hang my heater hoses, take them right up over top of the air tanks here. If it fits through here will be the question. I'll just bring a sample piece down and try it. And then as soon as it clears the front of the air tank here, then it's in the wash of the tire. So I could turn right there and uh, go either in through this one or through this one here. So I'm gonna drag the hose back down here and see how it will work. That's the plan, Stan.
<laughs> I'm like, if you want to learn some crazy new skills, just go buy a bus. Okay, guys, so here I am at the front of the Ender Bay, just on the side of the C-frame. And I just went and got the old hose just to test fit it. And yeah, it'll tuck right up in there. And it won't really um, be in contact with the air tank. But the cool thing is, um, in the summertime when this would get hot, I got two valves back there that I can shut off and this, this hose just sits then idle. So it's plugged off and it can't move the hot water up here, so. But I don't see this being, uh, it's actually off the tank. So I just don't think that will be a problem, especially if I can strap it up like that. So I think I'm gonna try to run it right up through there. Okay guys, here's a good one. Um, the heater core is in behind that. And uh, so Mark at the bus company told me, there's a filter down here. And yeah, sure enough, there was a filter in there. And when I pulled it out, this is what I found. <laughs> So if you've watched earlier videos, we knew there was a rodent in here at one time because it chewed up the wires to the GPS. But I'm like, seriously, he must have liked the taste of aluminum to eat all of this or make a hole that big to get in and out of here. Fits in there. And that's open to the bottom down there. And that's where the fresh air comes in for your heater core. So here we are under the bus. I mean, there's the, that's the front cowling. The headlights are hooked onto that. There's the horn. And just right back here, up, that's where that fresh air vent is at. Okay guys, this is my uh, solution for the eating up filter screen. <laughs> So this was a little bit coarser, but since it's been working with a huge hole in it, I think this will work fine too. Anyhow, if I have any problems, I can always go and add some finer screen underneath this, but I don't see it being a problem. So that's the way we're gonna do that. Okay guys, this is ongoing here. <laughs> Here's the heater core out of the bus pretty I don't know how this happened but where the heater core was in here was right here and what the rat was chewing up so I don't I'm not sure that he I don't think he could get in here because he would have had to go through the heater core but this is where that filter laid and he was Literally just chewing up that filter. Trying to get in here. Because we already discovered the other nest that he had in the bus. So I'm like, this is disgusting. And that's what all of your air is going to be blowing through. So it was a bit of a job getting this heater core out. But I think it's worth it to clean this mess up. And know that we'll be breathing clean air when it comes through there. It looks like the heater core has been leaking at this valve. At the valve for sure. And I mean, there's signs of leakage down here too. So maybe I can just get a new valve here and take this heater core in and have it cleaned and pressure tested. And then this is the blower motors for the defroster and for the cabin heat. And they slide in a tray. That tray slides in up here on the top and then it goes up through there into the bus and to the heater outlets or to the defroster outlets. And I don't know how in the heck this is even possible, but 
we were looking at these and spinning them around to see how freely they spun. And one of them has a pin in it. So this is where the air comes up through. And you can see there, there's a pin in there. So this is where the air comes up through into the cabin. And I, I cannot for the life of me figure out how this pin got in there. Might be the right diameter that could fit through those fins. But anyhow, definitely got to take that out so it's not rubbing on the fan. Okay guys, that was what was in the fan housing. All right guys, I'm just gonna vacuum all the crap out of this thing, I guess. I wonder if these are oiling ports. They both seem to turn pretty freely though, so I think they're okay. Okay guys, that's where everything came out of and that's where the mess from the rat was. And the rat, he never actually made it in this way. He just chewed that filter trying to get in this way. That's crazy. Um, anyhow, I've got this all cleaned out. And so now the situation is, even though this heater core is pretty beat up on the top, I don't even know why, but it's obvious that it was leaking here. And you can see the, the drip stuff and the drips down there. So anyhow, and the screws are all corroded. So it's obvious it's leaking around here. So I see the situation is if I can, I'll get a new one of these. And I'll take this heater core down to the radiator shop and I don't know if they can straighten these fins or I'll see what they say about cleaning this and pressure testing it. And then I can make a decision about if I need to put in a new one, if it's available and I'll go from there. So that's what's up YouTube. It seems like most people remove their heater hoses from the floor inside the bus because they don't want antifreeze leaking in there if they have a problem in the future and they're just in the way for your construction. So, so I have seen discussions on potentially how to put them back, but I haven't actually seen, found a video where anybody was putting them back up there. So this has went way longer than I anticipated and there's more problems than I thought. So I'm gonna end here and if you want to see if I use that heater core or a new one came or what happens, you could watch the next video. <laughs> Anyhow, I hope you guys have lots of love in your life and I hope your projects are just going smooth as can be. Love to you all. Bye.